evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. It's good to be with you again tonight. It's good to have this opportunity to share one more time from the Word of God, to feel God's presence, to know God's love, and to be with God's people. You know, I get excited about, number one, about being with God and being God's presence. I also get excited about being in God's Word and spending time in God's Word, but my friends, I also get very excited about getting to spend time with each and every one of you, whether you realize that or not. It's such a blessing to be able just to connect. You know, <clears throat> when you spend your days in, in the world and you hear all of the things that are going on in the world, all the negativity of the world, all of the outlook of the world, the evilness and the bad, you know, when you see that day in and day, day out and you hear all of this horrible stuff that is happening. My friends, to me, <clears throat> it's a joy to, to escape away from all of the problems of life for a little while. And, and Brother Ronnie, and, and just spend time with God's people and God in his word. And, and to be able to interact with you. You know, many people get on the Facebook page and, and they make statements and I'm able to interact with them during winding down and it's such a blessing to me to be able to see you and to interact with you but you know sister cindy we all need to have that place in that that moment in our lives where we can just spend time with god and god's people and just embrace the love of god embrace the truth of god embrace the power of god <clears throat> you know the word of god tells us that that with faith that we can please God, and, and we know that tonight we want to be pleasing to the Lord, but also faith gives us the strength and the ability, Brother Rocky, to rise above and overcome the challenges that we're facing. Faith gives us that, that unction inside or that passion or that drive inside, Sister Brenda, to be hungry for a deeper move of God, the deep word of God, the truths of God. Uh, uh, Brother Ronnie, it, it helps us to... It, feel that impact and, and know that even though that right now, Brother Stewart, that things are tough, that life is challenging, that life may be overwhelming, that we know that there's more to it than, than just what we see and what we feel and what we experience. We know that there's something far greater that, that is a part of our life, and that's God Almighty tonight. And I'm so thankful for that. I'm so thankful that Somewhere along the journey, I know that my mother and many others had played a part in, in, in sharing with me about Jesus. And don't get me wrong, I appreciate that. Growing up in the house of God, you know, the Word of God talks about raising a child up in the way you would have them to go. And, and I'm thankful that, that I live in that opportunity in that moment. But my friends, let me tell you something. When I began to have a relationship with Jesus for myself, when I began to choose daily to live for him and to walk with him and to allow him to lead me and direct me and guide me, my friends, my day is different. My life is different. The things around me are different. And so tonight, I, I hear a lot of times that, that people talk about how that, you know, they were dealt a bad hand in life. Anybody ever had a friend or a neighbor or a family member or a co-worker or somebody says, you know, if it wasn't for bad luck, I wouldn't have no luck at all. Or I, I can't believe the hand that life has dealt me. Guys, I, I want you to understand because of the sin that happened in the Garden of Eden, the Word of God says, Sister Crystal, because of one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. Now, we did not have a choice in that. I agree. We did not have a choice uh, about being born in, into a world that's filled with sin. We did not have a choice about how that the world of sin impacts this fleshly body and how that it gets sick and how that it goes through the struggles of life and how that one day that it physically dies and goes back to the dust of the ground. I know that many of you might say, well, you know, I didn't have a choice preacher in the family that, that I was born into, the area that I grew up in, the things that happened. And, and, and you know, along the way, a lot of people say, well, preacher, and, and they see me now, 
at, at the stage of my life where that I, I'm blessed abundantly in, in many different ways, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, and, but they also see the physical aspects that, that have happened in my life and how that God has taken me from one place to another. But guys, let me tell you something. I was not dealt this hand, you might say. This is not how my life began. <clears throat> you know, I grew up in, in an area that was very impoverished, that, that a lot of poverty, a lot of poor people lived there, a lot of challenges are there. Brother Ronnie from that area, he knows what I'm talking about. There, with, if you worked in the mining industry, one minute it was booming, the next minute it was failing. And, and, and so you would have those ups and downs, and there wasn't a lot of job opportunities in that area and all those things. And But do you know... In the midst of all of that, because some people say, well, preacher, you moved away from that. But I want you to understand, the beginning of my blessings in every aspect of my life began right there in southern West Virginia in the midst of all of this, of all the things that life had dealt in that area, in that community, the hardships, that, that my blessings began there in the midst of when I struggled with, with all the PTSD, the depression, the anxiety, all of the heartaches, all of the attacks, all of the backstabbing. I mean, guys, when you say dealt a bad hand, then, then if I was going to make that choice, then, then I would say, yes, I was dealt a bad hand. But but here's the thing. The reality was, while I did not have a choice in the things of life and the things that happened in life because many people around me were making choices for me. You know, growing up, my parents made the choice of where I went to school, where we lived, and, and the area that we lived in. Growing up, other people made the choice whether if they was my friend or not. But and, and guys, it wasn't the opportunities of doors being open and all those things happened because I knew people, you know, none of those things. But but here's the thing I want you to understand tonight, and this is where I, I, I want to house. There is a choice tonight that is yours, a choice that will make a difference in your life, a choice that will give you new hope, that it will help you to understand the freedom, the peace, the joy, and all that you could ever imagine within the family of God, making that right choice. And you know what, Brother Ronnie? I don't understand that sometimes people say, well, pre preacher, I didn't have the opportunity, but, but guys, you have the opportunity just like me, just like like any other Christian, just like any other pastor, you have an opportunity tonight to make a choice and whether you serve God or not. You have the opportunity tonight to make the choice and whether you obey God or not. You, my friend, you have that choice and no one can take that choice away from you, my friends, tonight. Now, the, the thing of it is we call that free will a free will choice. Now, some people have taken their free will and they've chose to continue to do the things in the world. And, and, and now, looking at it, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to tell you that I always made the right choice because there were times when I made some bad choices too and thought that I was making the right choices. But I'm so thankful that I realized that, that I need to make that choice, that wholehearted, that full committed choice to serve God and to follow God and to get into his word. Because let me tell you something now, in the book of Luke, and that's not where I'm going to start. I'm going to be in the book of Matthew chapter 7 when I get there. But, but in the book of Luke, there is a scripture that I want us to think about that speaks to making choices. It's Luke chapter 11, verse 28. And, and, and that scripture says this very thing. I put it on the screen for those that are on my Facebook tonight. And you can see it. But Luke eleven twenty-eight says this. It said, but he said, yea, rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. <clears throat> now, Sister Kathy, a lot of people hear the word of God. And many people say, well, you know, I read God's word. I, I, I hear the preached word of God. I hear the teach word of God. There's many people who say, Brother Ronnie, I hear the word of God. But not everybody 
keeps the word of God. You know, that's the reason why the scripture also says not only be a hearer, but be a doer also. So, so my friend, when you hear the word of God, you know, and this is one thing that helped me as a young preacher. One of my mentors really did me a favor many years ago. He said, preacher, he says, your job is to preach and teach the word. That's that's what God called me to do, is to preach and teach the word. And somebody might say, well, you're not doing that a very good job. Well, I'm doing the best that I know how, and I'm asking God to make it better. But, but my job is just to preach and teach that word. Now, your job is to make a choice what you do with what you're hearing. And, and I wish that that sometimes, Sister Kathy, there's things that I wish that I could make people do because, you know, Brother Ronnie's a pastor and there's other preachers listening in and they'll tell you the same thing. We know a lot of times when we're up there in the pulpit preaching and teaching, we can see. Now, we didn't make, the, we did not come with a sermon just for that person. But boy, when you're up there and you're preaching that sermon, Sister Crystal, and you're looking back over the congregation, you can see exactly where the Word of God is hitting because you can tell by how people are responding to it. But guys, here's the thing. I, I, I see so many people that I know that the Word of God is speaking to them who sit there, sometimes, Brother Ronnie, they'll sit there and they'll choose to ignore the Word of God. They'll, they'll choose to harden their heart and say, you know what, I don't want that, that scripture. I don't want it to be applied to me. I don't want to accept that that's speaking to me. I don't want that truth. Well, tonight, my friend, do you know that choice is yours? See, so you got to make a choice. You either say... That, that life has dealt me a hand and I have no choice in it and I can't do anything to change about it and you just continue to do whatever in the world and just let things happen the way they happen and hope they, heal, they, they work out for the best. Or you can choose to accept what God is trying to say to you. And you can choose to let that word come alive in your life and, and help you to change. To let it mold you and shape you and change you. Not into who Pastor Perry wants you to be, but into whom God created you to be. So I want you to hear me tonight because Sister Tammy, what people don't understand is, is God created every one of us. Yes, I'm talking to you, sinner. Yes, I'm talking to you, drug addict. Yes, I'm talking to you, harlot. I'm talking to every individual tonight that hears this message. God created every one of us to be his children. God created us to be his servants. God created us to be his people. Now, we, though, have been created with the choice to whether if we step into that role in which God has created us to be, or if we continue to live a life separate from what God desires for us tonight. But yes, I know that that, that means that you have to heed to the word of God. So he says, blessed are they who not only hear that word of God, but they keep that word. See, Jesus made this statement, Brother Jeff. He says, my sheep know my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. So tonight, my friend, in order for you, and, and I have a lot of people, a, a lot of friends, a lot of Christians, who's concerned that, Sister Brenda, that, that the enemy somehow in this last day and hour is going to be able to deceive them, and they're going to miss out on heaven. Here's the choice. I want you to hear me. The choice is this, God, I choose to yield to your word and your truth. I choose to let your word come alive in me and let it begin to mold me and shape me into who you want me to be. God, I choose that whenever the word of God reveals something in my life that is not lining up with you, God, I choose tonight to yield that to you so that you 
can help me re be released from that or no longer in prison to that and be free from that so that I might live for you. See, that choice is yours. You know, I never could understand, Sister Crystal, why when Pastor Perry or Brother Ronnie or any other preacher preaches and teaches, I can't understand why people get so mad at us. Because here's the thing. I can preach to you what thus saith the Lord. I can tell you what the Word of God says. But I'm not, I cannot remove your free will choice to make a decision with it. See, Sister Brenda, I know what happens. The conviction power gets on people's lives and it makes them uncomfortable. And the Word of God is full of warnings and guidance and truths. Do you know there's one scripture that, that, that I see that really I can't wrap my brain around in the world today? I understand what it means. So don't get me wrong. But I cannot understand why the Christian world is making the choice to ignore what God has asked us to do. You say, well, preacher, what is that? Do you know God's word tells us to shun the very appearance of evil. Shun it. Not to have any part in it. Not to take part with it. Not to be around it. But see, I have people today who say, well, preacher, says I can be around that sin and it don't bother me. It don't impact me. It don't affect me. So, what we're doing when we make that statement, we are absolutely saying, I choose not to believe God's warning. I choose not to accept what God is telling me. Then I think about that section of Scripture, and I promise you I'm going to get to Matthew chapter 7 here just in a minute. But then I think about that section of Scripture also that tells us not to be unequally yoked. And, but then I see Christians who put themselves in different types of relationships, not just marriages, but many different relationships, friendships and, 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 and partnerships and all these other things. I see themselves putting themselves in situations where they're unequally yoked with the non-believer or someone who is not dedicated to the Lord. And then, Sister Tammy, they, they, they asked you, say, Preacher, say, will you pray? I don't understand what's going on with my relationship. I don't understand what's going on with my business. I don't understand what's going on with my friendship. I don't understand what's going on with my family. I don't understand what's going on with my children. I don't understand what's going on with my life. Sometimes it's simply because we're choosing our choice, God is not making us. The devil can't make you. I hear people say that, well, you know, the devil made me do it. No, he didn't. No. The devil may tempt you. The devil may put the ideal in your mind. But my friend, if you do it, the choice has been yours. See, see, we want to do what we call the blame game. We want to blame everyone else for what's happening in our lives. But we, we have to make that choice. And so here tonight in the book of Matthew chapter 7, I like this section of scripture and I bring this out. Because there is a teaching out there, Brother Stewart, that says that we do not have a choice. 
There's a teaching out there that people call predestination. There's a teaching that says that everyone has been predetermined. Your destination has been predetermined by God and you really don't have a choice. My friend, that's not true. You have a choice as to whether if you go to heaven or not. You have a choice. That's the reason why he says, let whomsoever will come and take of the water of life freely. Here tonight, there's a section of scripture right here in the book of Matthew chapter 7 that says that there is a choice that every one of us have to make. There are two roads laid out in our lives. There's the broad road and the narrow road. And guess who gets to choose which road we walk on? We do. Matthew chapter 7, and I'm going to begin with verse 12, which is what we call the golden rule. But it says, therefore, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Now, I, I mentioned this tonight but because some people say, well, I don't understand why the world is doing this to me, why the world is treating me this way. Do you know, in order to have friends, you also have to show yourself to be friendly. But you got to ask yourself, when it says, whatever you want men to do to you, do also to them. Now, you say, well, preacher says, I, they don't deserve for me to love them. They don't deserve for me to forgive them. They don't deserve, and, and the list can go on and on and on and on and on. But I want to ask you tonight, did you deserve any of that from God? You didn't, did you? We're able to receive it because we're justified through the blood. But without the shedding of that blood of Jesus being applied to our sin, we did not deserve anything that we have received from God. Now, we also have to ask ourselves, we're wanting these people to be good to us. We're wanting them to treat us right. We want them to speak to us right. But did we do anything to deserve it from them either? Have we done anything for them? Have we shown them any type of love? Have we chosen to do that second greatest commandment, to love thy neighbor as thyself? See, see, Brother Rocky, now it's easy. It's easy for me to throw stones, ain't it? Boy, it's their fault, man. They're so mean. They're so hateful. They're so ugly. Uh, they, they this, they're that, they're that, they're that. This, that's why I'm acting the way I'm acting. But have we removed then the responsibility of choice that lies within ourselves? Have we chosen have we chosen, not the world, because the world is filled with sin. And see, here's the thing. We are in a world that is filled with sin. Now, every day we have to choose to either let the world impact us and to strip away our joy and our peace and our ability to love others as God has loved us and to show them compassion. We can choose to let that be stripped away by the cares of life and the things of the world. Or we can choose to be the children of God. We can choose to live for the Lord in the midst of all that is happening. And when we choose to show people the love of God, when we choose to show grace and forgiveness, when we choose to show them that compassion and that understanding. Brother Rocky, I've seen it time and time again. 
I've seen it impact the life of those individuals that it melted that ugly, hateful, hatred heart. And something new came alive in them. Making a choice. But the choice goes even beyond that, my friend. The choice of where will we end up when this day is over, when life is over? Where will we end up? It's not your neighbor. It's not the church. It's not anyone else making that choice. My friend, you're making that choice yourself. God didn't predestinate you to that choice. The preacher can't preach you in heaven or in hell. Your neighbor can't decide which way you go. But my friend, that choice is yours. And here we see, he said, there lays two ways, there's two roads in life that we get to choose to be on. Now, I'm a firm believer, and if anyone thinks this is wrong, please send me something and just say, Preacher, I think you missed the mark, and here's why I think you missed the mark. Don't just say you think I missed the mark now, but, but show me in the Word of God so that I can get that right in my head. But I believe that, that Brother Ronnie, on these two roads, the broad road, I believe on the broad road, there is things called curses problems and challenges and struggles that we will face because they are laid out on this road if we choose to walk on it. But I also believe that on this narrow pathway, Sister Cindy, that there are blessings, that there is healings, that there is peace, that there is strength, that there is power, that there is encouragement on this narrow road. And they're there. They're, they're there waiting for us. And I believe the reason why that a lot of people miss the blessings that, that God had intended for them in this part of their journey is because they choose to be on the wrong road. See, tonight he says, in verse 13, he says, Enter by the narrow gate. He said, For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there many who go in by it. Now, when you want to talk about going along with the crowd, if you base your relationship with God, if you base your church on numbers, then my friend, you may be trying to go along with the majority, with the crowd, who may be choosing this broad road because you say, well, preacher, I, I think that, that, that everybody who goes to church is doing the right thing. Well, my friend, the problem with that is this, is that not everybody's heeding to the true word of God. Not everybody is letting the word of God change them and mold them and shape them and remove things out of their life that they don't need. And, and some of them have been blinded to that truth because somewhere along the journey, whether someone else has taught it to them or they have convinced themselves, somewhere along that journey, they have been deceived and they, they're living in that same right way. Well, the, that same right way is on that road, that broad road of destruction. It seems right. I want you to hear me. It seems right, Sister Crystal, because it seems like everybody's doing it. Well, preacher, everybody's doing it. Everybody has this at their church. Everybody agrees that this is okay. Everybody says that God has changed his mind. Everybody says that we were too strict as a church. Everybody. Do you know what's scary with that statement, everybody? It's where it says that many will be found there on down this broad road. That scripture that says that there'll come a time when they'll not endure what? Sound doctrine, good doctrine, the truth of God. But they'll heap to themselves teachers having what? Itching ears. And they'll be turned unto what? Unto fables, unto stories, unto 
feel-good stories, things that make them feel good in the flesh. Do you know that a majority of our churches across the nation no longer preach out of the Bible, no longer teach out of the Bible. They use everything else instead. And see, now it's a, now it's a, well, preacher, everybody's doing it. Everybody's doing it this way, so why don't we? Because I don't want to be on this broad road where a lot of people are traveling. Because it appears to be the best choice. It appears to be the right choice. And I can tell you tonight, Sister Cynthia, that as a pastor, every day I have to make a choice. Every day I'm making choices about whether if I continue following what I believe to be the truth of God, even though many people call me old-fashioned, even though people tell me that I'm just a stuck in the mud and I, I've stayed in the past and that I need to come to the present, every day I have to make a choice. And sometimes, and Brother Ronnie and other preachers and pastors that, that have made this choice will tell you the same thing. Sometimes making the right choice has made my life very lonely and isolated from the people of the world. Now, I'm not isolated from God. Now, don't get me wrong. But I'm talking about that human connection, that worldly connection. Sometimes, I, I'm not the person that people wants to invite to the party because if I'm going to party, it's going to be a godly party, a righteous party, and not a worldly party. I'm still that preacher that believes that Christians should not partake in alcohol in any fashion. Not one drink, not one swallow, not any fashion. I still believe that we should not partake in alcohol at all. In today's time, Sister Brenda, that don't make me very popular because there's a lot of Christians today that wants to be social drinkers. There's a lot of Christians today that believe it's okay to drink and party it up. So no, I don't, I don't get invited to those parties because I still believe that there's a way that we need to live. Because let me tell you something. When you work not only as a pastor, but when you work in the world uh, of counseling and you see the addiction that people are struggling with, not just from major drugs, my friend, but when you see the damage and destruction that alcohol is causing in homes and in people's lives, people that are taking their very life drunk and out of their mind and and killing innocent people, my friend, let me tell you something. I don't know how anyone can be okay with anything that is addicting that would destroy a man's life and kill innocent people. But again, it's a choice. A, a, a choice that we make. And along this way, yes, I'm going to tell you something. Along this way, I've lost friends. I, I've lost family members who don't want to hang out and come around. I, I've lost other church people. As a matter of fact, you want to get around. You talking about people getting upset. When you get around other church people and you start talking about the things that we should not be doing, that many the church world has taken hold of, it's a preacher, it's okay. I, I'm going to be honest with you. Because let me tell you, some of these things may be in your past. That's one thing. But I don't think Christians should be doing a lot of things that we're letting go on in our lives. One of the things that makes me very unpopular with some of the church crowd today is I don't do anything with Halloween. I don't do all this trunk or treat and all that stuff because let me tell you something. I believe it's evil and I read to you the other night where the word of God talks about how that when we're disobedient or rebellious, it's as witchcraft. I don't participate in Halloween and I don't participate in trunk or treat and all this stuff because I believe it's a sinful thing and evil thing. I believe we're holding on and grabbing hold of the things of the world and somebody's already saying, see, I knew he was judgmental. That's not being judgmental, guys. 
I don't want to do anything that I think potentially can displease God. And so it doesn't make me very popular. I'm not a very popular preacher when it comes to all of these flashing lights and, and smoke and all this other stuff they use in churches to make their church look more like a bar and a social club than they do the house of God. Let me tell you something. I'm not very popular because I don't like that stuff. I don't agree with that stuff. But a lot of churches have accepted it. But do you know what, Brother Ronnie? Not one human being can show me how any of that stuff is spiritual and holy. That stuff has been used for entertainment and to please the flesh. Smoke and strobe lights and all of this stuff, all this bar scene, does not cause the Holy Spirit to fall more. But see, it makes me very unpopular because every day I'm making a choice. And somebody's saying, well, preacher, that's the reason why your church ain't grown. That's the reason why that you're not passing a church of two and three and four and five hundred people. Honey, let me tell you something. If compromising on the word of God and the truth of God is what it takes to, for me to pastor a big church, I'll never pastor a big church. Every day, I have to make a decision. In the church world, every day, Brother Ronnie, as a pastor, we have to make a decision about whether if this is okay and if that's okay, whether we should allow this or whether we should go down that. Every choice that we're making. And people will attack us for the choices that we make. But what people have to understand is that as the pastor, I'm the man who's going to be held accountable for the things that go on within the church because God has placed me there as the pastor. God's going to hold me accountable. Every day, it's a decision. And, and, and I watch... I watch the world, Brother Stewart, as I as I watch them. You know, I've got pastor friends that that you know that have all kinds of people that all time hang out with them and go do things with them, and they want to do this and they want to do that. But the problem is, guys, is it is you know I'm not into sports. I'm not into a lot of things. I want to serve. God. I want to talk about Jesus. I want to talk about the Word. I, I want to go out and, and, and have fellowship with other people of God. And I want us to worship in a way with one another that we become stronger, that we are encouraged, and that we're impacting the lost of this world. And so I'm not very popular because of the choices that I'm making. But do you know I remember a man by the name of Jesus who was not very popular amongst the people because of the choice he was making. See, Jesus says, I came to do the will of the Father. And the Father's will, my friend, what was not to, not to have fellowship with sin. He said, well, Preacher, Jesus hung out with sinners. He did. But let me tell you something. They were not committing acts of sin as he was hanging out with them. As a matter of fact, you'll find that when they came to him in multitudes, that he was sharing with them the kingdom. And nowhere did he justify any sins they were doing. As a matter of fact, when he would tell them that their sins are forgiven, he would tell them to go and sin no more. We talked last night in Bible study about a choice that we saw in the Garden of Gethsemane as Jesus was praying, Father, let this cup pass from me. He said, but not my will, but thy will be done. You want to know how to make your life better? 
how to reap the blessings of God. Do you really want to know? Honey, I got news for you. It's not about running aisles and jumping seats and shouting and all that stuff. It's about living for God and following Him and making the decision every day to put Him first. Every day. He says, because narrow is the gate Listen, you better read this in your book. It says, and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. Why is it difficult? Because, preacher, every day you have to make a conscientious choice. A choice about whether if hanging out with your friends and, and being popular and a part of the crowd is more important than living right for Jesus. Every day you've got to make a choice to dedicate your life to God, to spend time in the Word, to spend time in prayer, to spend time in fellowship, to spend time in the Word. Every Sunday, this is one that's not very popular neither, I'll tell you now. Sister Tammy, every Sunday morning we have to make a choice whether if we're going to go and celebrate the entertainment of the world and do the things that we want to do in the flesh and please our family and please our friend and please our neighbors and, and be a good citizen in society or if we're going to go to the house of God and dedicate our time to God. Every Wednesday night we have to make the same choice. And there's a decision to make, my friend. Because there is a command for us to assemble ourselves together. There is a structure in which God has created and made. God has made the structure of the church, my friend, and a lot of preachers and teachers want to teach against this structure. But let me tell you something. God put a structure in place. As a matter of fact, the Word of God talks about bishops or pastors. And He talks about all the different offices that operate within that church. Paul himself went out and established churches. God, in the book of Revelation, wrote letters to the churches. I agree, Brother Paul, we should, live, we should make a choice to live every day for God. Absolutely. But my friends, there's choices to be made. And it's not easy. It's not. It's not easy to keep this flesh in subjection because this flesh has not yet been redeemed, my friend. The inner man, the soul, was what's been redeemed when you got saved. But this outer man, the flesh, is still corrupted. And honey, if you're letting the flesh make the choices of where you're going to go and what you're going to do, you're going to follow after the sins of the world. As a matter of fact, the Word of God itself says that when we are drawn away from God and God's plan, God's will, that we are drawn away by the lust of our own flesh. Every day we've got to make this choice to live for Jesus. Because every day... We're going to face something new. Every day we're going to face battles and challenges and critics. And, and let me tell you something. I, I, being a pastor and, and putting uh, the messages and, and putting the teachings out online, let me tell you, I get criticized by people. I get attacked by people. But I still have to make a choice every day to do what I feel that God put on my heart to do. And see... It's a decision to follow God. And, 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 and believe me, it's, I, I've not been popular because of the decisions I've had to make. As a matter of fact, I've had people get mad at me and stop talking to me because of the decisions I've had to make along the journey. But let me tell you something. Obeying Him and obeying His Word is more important than obeying the world. 
I'm not going to get through all this, am I? He says, because, he said, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravious wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from th thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. My friend, again, he's talking about making choices. You will know those people who have come in, those false prophets, those false teachers and wolves, wolves in sheep clothing. You will know them by the decisions and the choices they are making. When they are making decisions and choices, Sister Kathy, to participate in anything that's worldly and ungodly, when they make choices to participate and, and to go along with and bring in anything that is not holy and pure and true, when they allow the world to infiltrate the church and no longer see it as a holy ground, when they no longer see value in the assembling of themselves together with other Christians, when they no longer see the value of the house of God and the sanctuary and a place for us to worship, when they no longer see value value in the preaching and the teaching of the word of God when they no longer see value in the ways of God. My friend, we see the fruit that they are bearing by their choices. But see, they don't like that, do they? As a matter of fact, I love this statement that they make. It says, well, you can't judge me. Only God judges me. The problem with that statement is this, Brother Ronnie. I'm not judging them. I'm telling them what God has already judged. But they are refusing to listen to the judgment of God. So therefore, nobody gets to judge them because they're not listening. If God's word, my friend, tells you it's sin and tells you it's wrong, it's God, God, who is judging that action. And God who has already determined whether if it's sin or not sin. Not Pastor Perry. He says, not everyone, now listen, who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of what? My Father in heaven. He who makes the choice to not only be a hearer of the word, but a doer. Not only to hear the word, but to obey it. See? He says it's not everybody who proclaims to be a Christian. And that's what he means by it's not everybody that says Lord, Lord. It's not everybody who proclaims that they're on their way that's actually on their way. As a matter of fact, when you get over there to the separating of the sheep and the goat, there's one part of scripture, uh, Brother Paul, where, where the people said, but Lord, did we not cast out demons in thy name? Lord, did we not do all this marvelous work in thy name? And Brother Philip, he says to them, Depart from me, ye which do work iniquity, for I never knew you. There's people out there that think they're doing the will of God that's not because they're not listening to God. They're listening to the justification of their hearts and the God they created in their minds. Because I'm going to tell you something. The God of creation is not going to tell you to go out and do anything that's seen as a rebellious act against the will of the word of God in any place. He says, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, 
Have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And when then I will declare to them, look here, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice this lawlessness. Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them, I will liken him unto a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that, and it did not fall, for it was founded on the rock. Now here's another decision that's being made. Well, i got to hurry. I'm running out of time. You want to know, Christian, sinner, why it's so hard to go through the battles and the trials that you're facing? You may want to ask yourself the decisions that you've been making. Have you truly anchored yourself upon the rock? We know tonight that that rock is Jesus. And we know what Jesus said unto the disciples. He said, who do people say that I am? And who do you say that I am? You know, they went through all of that. And finally, Peter said, thou art the rock. Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. He said, Simon Barjona, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto thee. He says, huh, he said, upon this rock, upon the truth of who he was, I will build my church. And what? The gates of hell will what? Not prevail against it. Church, if you're being defeated individually, as the church as a whole, if you're being defeated, you better start looking to make sure that what you're standing on, what you're built upon, is the truth. Because here's the thing. If you are built on the truth, then the enemy cannot prevail against it. The enemy cannot defeat the truth of God. He cannot. He says, but everyone who hears these things of mine and does not do them. Now, everyone that hears the word of God, everyone that hears the message, everyone that's hearing this message tonight, you've got to make a decision what you're going to do with it. And he said, and everyone who hears this and does not do it, not Pastor Perry's word, but everyone that hears it and does not do it, he said, will be like to a foolish man who built his house upon the sand. And when the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on the ha that house and it fell and great was its fall. Why? Because they failed to do what the word of God has told them to do. You say, well, preacher, you don't go through battles? Absolutely, I go through battles. Absolutely, I do. Absolutely, I feel overwhelmed and challenged at times. Absolutely. But do you know what's, what has kept me from falling and giving up? Because I stay continued anchored to God's truth. Whenever things are happening in my life, I don't look at Pastor Perry. I don't look at the world. I don't look at the devil. I'm not looking to blame anyone. I'm not looking to accuse anyone. I want to go back to the Word and find out what I need to do. Maybe it's time for me to stand as the storm is raging until God gets me through it. Maybe. It's a choice that I need to stand and do something different, a change that needs to be made. But whatever it is, I need to go back and make sure I'm anchored in that moment to the Word. Because then, while the battle may be raging, and while I may even feel at times just like the disciples who were on the boat, Lord, don't you care that I'm about to perish? As long as I'm anchored, I'd never give up hope that victory is coming for me. Why? Because with every way, God has already made that way of victory, already made that way of escape. And so it was, he says, 
when Jesus had ended these sayings, that the people was astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. My friend, tonight, no matter who you are, no matter where you are, no matter what you're going through, you can either say, well, this is what life gave me. This was the hand that I was dealt. I just got to deal with it. You can either continue just to struggle and blame others. Or my friend, tonight you can find the strength that you need and make the choice of victory. That victory comes when we trust in the truth of Jesus Christ and the plan that God has for our life and we anchor ourselves in his word of truth. There is no other truth that can set you free. The only truth that will set you free is the truth of God. Let us pray. Father God, tonight as we come to you, I'm thankful, Father God, for your love and your peace and strength. I'm thankful for what you allow us to be a part of. I'm thankful, Father God, that you help me every day to dig deeper into your word, to stay anchored to your truth, to stay anchored to your plan. Father God, I'm thankful that when those battles come, when the enemy attacks, when situations arise, when, when things happen, when thoughts come across, when everything is rolling around, Father God, I'm thankful, Father God, that I'm able to withstand the storm because I'm anchored in you. Father God, help me to get anchored even deeper. Help me to stand even stronger. Help me to see even further into your word of truth. Give me that wisdom and knowledge. Lord, anyone tonight that is lacking that wisdom and knowledge, you said, Lord, if they would ask in faith believing that you would give it to them, Lord, I just pray tonight that they will seek that, seek that wisdom and knowledge they need of your word, of your truth, that they too may be anchored and they may be founded upon that solid rock so that when the storms are raging against them, that they don't get beat up, that they don't feel weak, that they don't feel overwhelmed the way that they have in the past when they fought these battles. Father God, help them to be anchored to you. Father God, tonight I just pray, Father God, that you speak your word upon every individual tonight that is listening in, everyone that will hear this in the week to come. I just pray, Father God, that you will meet their needs, change their life. Father God, send us revival, empower us, fuel us again with the fire in our hearts for you, Father God, that is greater than anything that we've ever seen before. Father God, I pray tonight that your will will be done, your power will be known, and your presence will be felt. We ask it all in Jesus' mighty name. And amen. Thank you as always for being with me tonight. Thank you for praying for me, for praying with me, for praying for others. Please make sure to click the share button, share tonight's message, invite others to share, invite others to listen. Come back tomorrow night at 9 o'clock again for Winding Down with Pastor Perry as we look again at what God may stir our heart to look at, speak about, pray about, preach about, teach about, whatever God chooses to do. I pray wherever you go, my friend, that God is with you, that God is blessing you and touch you. Whatever you do, I pray that God will use that for the goodness of his glory and his kingdom. But most of all, I'm praying that God will use each and every one of you to reach someone else for the gospel truth. Be blessed and have a wonderful night.